part, babe. Now I'm fine. Taking trouble, sugar. Yeah. Moving down the line. Oh. Trouble, man. All right, listen. <clears throat> I'm waiting on some food. I'm in the ghetto right now. My God, I'm in the ghetto. I'm in a place called uh, You Buy, We Fry. Yeah. Dead center in the ghetto of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm out here. Every time I go somewhere, I, I roam the neighborhoods and, you know, just see if there's some houses or things for sale. I call it driving for dollars usually. I'm walking for dollars now where people will have things for sale and stuff like that. And it got me to think, I said, you know what, let me, let me do a video real quick about this. <clears throat> Cash is not trash, okay? The US dollars are not trash, ladies and gentlemen. We need them. Um, they are the strongest currency in the world. Out of the 180 fiat currencies there are worldwide, the United States dollar has two things going for it. Number one, it's the world reserve currency. And number two, it's backed by one of the strongest militaries in the world. It may not be backed by gold, but it's backed by the military. And also, it's very recognizable. I mean, everybody knows what a U.S. dollar is. Everybody doesn't know what a Portugal money is or whatever. Everybody knows what a U.S. dollar is around the world. You give them one of those, pretty much 99% of the population knows it. <laughs> so why do you need it? Well... When it comes to stacking, right? Stacking silver, Bitcoin, gold, platinum, uh, items you need and stuff like that, you, you buy them with cash, right? But cash is not just important for those things. I believe, in my personal opinion, that your stack can, should consist of many different things, right? You know, I think it was uh, Silverback told me he doesn't like uh, Bitcoin. And I understand it, you know, he's uh, he's been a long time silver stacker. And many of you guys, when I start talking about Bitcoin, you kind of like feel like I'm a, a, a car salesman or something like that. And some of you Bitcoin people think I'm an idiot for buying silver. Guys, we need both. We need, we need all of it. It's not precious metals versus ammo. It's not Bitcoin versus water. It's not precious metals versus food. We all need these things. They all do a different or play a different role in your stack. And your stack is not just silver. Your stack is commodities, things that you need. Once you get to a certain mark of commodities, whether it's three months of living off of things or something happened, six months a year for you and your family, once you get to that statement or state of water, food, and supplies, uh, I think precious metals comes after that, to be honest. Precious metals are not important than the commodities you need to trade and buy what you're buying those precious metals for to get, right? You need Bitcoin in the digital age and you need physical silver because it's God's money and it's a hedge on inflation. We, we already know all these reasons. But also you need to have cash in your, in your stack. You gotta have it, ladies and gentlemen. If the, if the grid goes down, or something like that, your Bitcoin's not gonna work. Now, let me tell you this about silver and gold. I love it, absolutely love it. But everybody doesn't know about silver and gold. Now, I'm pretty sure, excuse, excuse the wind. I'm pretty sure most of you have got a lot of constitutional or fractional silver, uh, just in case something happens. You didn't buy it just for uh, SH, SHTF, but you bought it for, you know, cause you like it. But many people believe that if shit hits the fan, uh, you can use your constitutional silver. I'm not saying you can't use it, but I, I firmly believe this. You're not gonna be able to use it like you think you're gonna use it, okay? It's just not. If the internet's not working or something like that, unless you carry around a book with you explaining to the other 97 or 98% of the people in the world that don't have no idea what uh, silver bullion is or constitutional silver is, because most of them are gonna think it's just a quarter or a dime or a dollar or a 50 cent piece. If you don't have that book right around with you to educate them right then and there, it's gonna be 10 cents to them, regardless of the silver content in it that you know is valuable. Doesn't matter what you know, it matters what the other person knows. That's why silver is so cheap right now, because many people don't know what it is. They don't know the value of it. And you, you guys know this, I mean, I talk to people all the time. I put silver in their hands, I don't carry around gold. 
I educate people on personal freedoms, the Constitution, and silver, God's money. I talk to them about it all the time. They have no idea what it is. Most of them think it's jewelry. They have no idea what silver bullion is. I didn't know what it was three years ago. But they do know what cash is. And that's why you need cash. You need denominations of different cash. You need $1 bills, $5 bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, $100 bills. You need them. You need change. You need nickels, dimes, quarters. 50 cent piece if you can, whatever. And I, I actually do that. I actually, I will take a $100 bill because I'll knock two birds in one stone. I'll take a big $100 bill and I'll break it to get a bunch of 50 cent pieces or quarters or dimes for obvious reasons. The first reason being a silver stacker is what do we like to do? We like to search for silver, right? Second reason is once I get all those quarters and dimes and nickels or 50 cent pieces or whatever, I don't change it back in, I just keep it, right? Every once in a while I'll find something, but I'll just keep that change. Because if something happens, you need all denominations, ladies and gentlemen. You need to have plenty of cash. Whatever percentage that you want to have, I suggest maybe 5% of your net worth, three to 5% of your net worth in cash. And I believe that uh, if you do have that or a little bit more or a little bit less in your bank account, if I were you, and this is not financial advice, and you see what the banking uh, system is, do is doing, I would take that money out of the bank. And I have two rules to money in the bank or cash or fiat currency in the bank. Number one is I only put in there what I am what I can afford to lose. I don't wanna hear nothing about that 250,000 because most of us don't have 250,000 in the bank. Those are high net worth people, business owners and things like that. 250,000, they do not have enough. The FDIC does not have enough if they don't, if they don't print the money and don't get bailed out by the government because a lot of these small banks won't be. The ones that are not, uh, uh, funding the selected people, I will say. They're not gonna give you that 250,000. It's not enough in there, in the, in the reserves for them to, to cover all the people's, uh, the little people like us, uh, 250,000. So what I would do is number one, take out what you can't afford. Number two, I only keep in there what I pay my bills. I, I don't even have a savings account anymore. For what? I got my own savings account. I'm my own bank. And I tell you guys that all the time, be your own bank. You know what I mean? That's why I have a bunch of supplies that I don't give any a custodian to hold for me. If I got a bunch of cans of soup, Campbell's soup, I'm not gonna let Campbell or any kind of custodian hold my Campbell's soup. It's mine. Just like my cash is mine, just like my Bitcoin is mine, just like my gold and silver, well, my little gold, my gold backs. <laughs> my silver is mine, my water is mine, everything I have, my my pew pews, my, my ammunition, all that stuff is mine. My rope, my duct tape, my medical supplies, especially medical supplies. Get on the medical supplies. That's very, very important. All that stuff is mine. I don't have anybody hold it. So again, cash is not trash. If I go overseas right now, and different places in the, in the country too, especially overseas, but if let's just say in uh, in Las Vegas, my, my dollar is not as powerful. My US dollar is not as powerful as it would be somewhere down south because the rent is a little cheaper, the food's a little cheaper, the cost of living overall is a little cheaper out there. But if I take these same dollars to Los Angeles, California, or New York City, you gotta pay 4,500 just to live somewhere. Maybe in a one bedroom apartment, seriously. That's, that's not the, that's not, uh, it's no BS. <clears throat> but if you go overseas with your US dollars, comparing to the other 180 currencies, you're almost rich over there, seriously. You can get in Thailand, you can get a nice place for $250 a month the same place you'd pay 4,500 over in uh, in New York City or California. So again, uh, your US dollars are very, very important, more important than other areas, but I don't care what area you're in. You must, must, must stack your cash, keep it safe out of the banking system, and be your own bank. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, I think my food's almost ready. I love each and every one of you. God bless you and your family, and I'll talk to you soon. Uh, I forgot one thing. God bless this country, man. God bless this country. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Peace and love, guys.